post the world take two action <laughs> All right, y'all, welcome back to another episode of Post the World. You know, we're in a new month, so a new series. So this series for May is All Access. And our second guest is Chas Anthony. What's up, Chas? How you doing? How are you? I'm doing cool. That's good. Tell them who is Chas. Just um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> At first, when he heard this question, he was like, I don't know what to say. I don't know who Chaz is. Um, I'm a Chaz. <laughs> right now, he's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, a designer, artist manager, mm -hmm. creative. Mm -hmm. um, Jack of all trades. Yeah. Yeah, many, many master talents. Of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> master of them all. Yeah. Master of them all. Um, there you go. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. right now, the main thing that I am is just designer and manager. Okay, okay. I have the capacity to work, you know, as like an attorney, something like that, but I'm not wearing the hat right now. Tell them about it. Chad's got a lot. <laughs> Chad's really a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I graduated law school in, um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, but when I graduated law school, I started the brand. And I was also managing an artist at the time. But now, um, I just, I don't manage artists. I manage four new artists. New artists. Mm -hmm. That's cool. cool. I haven't told the world, showed the world yet. I was gonna say, I didn't know that. Oh, okay, we're gonna get into that. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> so talk about Don't Let Mom Find Out Your Brand. Like, how did, what made you want to go from law to owning a brand? And when did you realize, like, yeah, this is what I should do? Uh, well, it started because, like, like I said this before, I could, I could never find clothes that I like. Mm -hmm. um, now it's easier to find clothes you like because everybody has a brand. So this it's is like, true. It's <laughs> so now it's like easier to find clothes. But at first, um, especially when I was living, I was living in Nashville. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't have any stores you can go and like buy the type of clothing I would wear. Um, yeah, so I was just like, I'm fed up. I just started making my own clothes. Mm -hmm. Now, I got so many clothes in my closet that I've been actually going to walk in and walk out with a whole fit on them. Yeah, it's lit. How do you come up with the name? Um, <laughs> it was a Fenster account originally. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's how Post the Girl was. It was a yeah. and I, Like, I made it because I was in law school and I was like, post my real life on there. Mm -hmm. And post, like, just grime and stuff on there, you know. Some trash Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like shit. That's cool. And then one day I was just like, I forgot where I was. I think I was at the house with some of my friends mm -hmm. in Nashville, some of my roommates. And we were, of course, like, doing boy things. And I was like, bro. Uh, I was on this up, I put some other bros to make some clothes now. Mm -hmm. And they were like, uh, what is your damn to do that? And I looked up, I looked up on like uh, GoDaddy or whatever, and I thought my name was available. And like, I already had the Instagram. I was like, yeah, bro, I'm gonna have this shit. It's not a thing. So, yeah. That's lit. That's where it started. Now, that's not like my first um, piece. I was gonna ask you that. What was your first piece? Yeah. My first piece was, okay, well, hold on. It's two sides. Because I had my first piece that was manufactured, mm -hmm. and then I had my first piece that was actually made like by. In house. Mm. So the main, the first the manufacturer piece, that's a, like everyone's favorite. It was an Astro Boy design. Mm. And did two colorways. It was black and the yellow. And it had a picture of Astro Boy in the back with a band aid on his face and like something covered his mouth. A band aid over his mouth, I'm sorry. And, um, and it said, Don't let mom find out on the waistband. Mm -hmm. And shit, it was like, uh, Plead the fifth on the wrist. I mean, on the wrist cuff. And that was it. And I did some real tree um, joggers. They had Don't Let Mom Find Across the Waistband also. Mm. And when I mailed PR packages out, I, I, uh, <laughs> I vacuum sealed the clothes mm -hmm. and then I like duct taped it to make it look like it was getting like a pack, or like a bow, like it was getting a bow. That's cute. You know the bow, not a bow. You know the bow is. What you mean? Oh, like, yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. So it's like you've been in a boat, but it was cool. And like everybody, That's like, cool though. Everybody's posting on Instagram. Cool. Like, what the fuck is it? Yeah. Um, and that's how I started to get traction. And like people are already 
like on my on my page, I would I was strategic because I would always post like fashion stuff on my story or post other people's profiles who had who were like into fashion and was dressed nice. I post on my page, mm. tag them, and they'd mm-hmm. reposting it. But so it was kind of like a people coming to my page looking for like inspo, style, inspo and stuff like that. So then again, the, I started getting making the post clothes, they were like they trusted my vision. They're mm-hmm. like, yeah, okay. That's I lit. trust where you coming from with it because you already put my song. Mm-hmm. How you come up with the face? Cause it, whenever I see that face or anything, even if it's not your face, I'd be like, "There's some trash shit." I know. <laughs> no, I um, I was sad and hot. <laughs> sad boys, sad boys club. But no, I was laying in bed one day and I had to, I had just bought an iPad. Mm-hmm. I was in law school. I just bought an iPad and he had no money, bro. Like, I don't know how about that iPad. Like, I bought it with a credit card, like a Best Buy credit card when you get it from like that. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I bought the iPad, but I was like, I'd be damned if I like go spend all this and that, you know, do something with it. So I was laying in the bed. I just drew. I was just drawing. I was doodling. And then I drew it, and I was like, it's going to be the logo right here. It's going to be the logo right here. And I threw it. Shout out to the sad friend. boys. Oh, God. And my friends were like, they were just hyping me up, bro, blowing some up. But it, you know, it turned out to be shit. Yeah, the thing. That's lit. Mm-hmm. Love that. I always encourage your friends. Always encourage your friends. What's this? Very important. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the journey overall from like when you first started to where you are now. Like, man, what have you learned the most? Man. You've, it's, you've oh, experienced bro. a lot. Yes. I've learned so much though. Um, the main thing is just like people. Mm-hmm. The most important thing for entrepreneurs, the most important thing, like if you're running a business, like relationship with people is the most important thing you have. Yeah. Um, and I'm working on it. I'm working on. I'm, I I do well with it, but I want to do better. Mm-hmm. Um, like relationship building with those that like don't know me and really probably won't know me. Mm-hmm. Let's say like it's customer base. It can be the smallest thing as far as like um, customer service wise. Yeah. You know, I want to be better. Yeah. That's a relationship. Yeah. It's been a relationship with your customers. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely because people quick to comment on customer service mm-hmm. often, especially especially these days. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they cancel culture shit for real. No, literally, um, they quick too. They ass yeah, like, and if you don't ship they shit three minutes after they <laughs> email you hate mail. <laughs> You're posting on Instagram. <laughs> this nigga scared me. Oh God, do not trust this business. <laughs> you God, just placed your God. order. I know it's bro. Like. Yeah, anyway. That's lit. What the? So this past, like, past, what was that, last year, past couple months, you kind of, like, just hit, like, a huge shift. Yeah, um... What have you learned from that experience? No, what experience you talking So, like, shift as far as, like, like, that, because do I call it an accident? <laughs> it, I mean, shit, it wasn't no fucking accident. <laughs> But no, mm-hmm. um, so mayhem I saying, basically. I mean, just incident, yeah. Um, January 5th, yeah. Um, I was shot five times, uh, sitting well, driving my car in East Memphis. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was at a red light, and this truck was up next to me. Um, and we were up in the front seat, in the back seat, two guys in the front seat, back seat, and they just like unloaded their rifles mm-hmm. on my car. Um, my car shot like 23. 20 plus times, and I was hitting my face, neck, back, back of my head. Um, and this lady who works at Benihana, which I saved my life, um, like she pulled me out the car. After I had been sitting there for a few minutes, though, like so many cars had passed by, and like she met her Uber. That was your she angel. Uber. Yeah, she was in the Uber, and she met the Uber driver pull over, and um, she came and like hit me out the car. Mm-hmm. Just that situation, but. I was in bad shape, but uh, yeah, she saved my life. Oh, yeah, really? she saved my life. If, if she wouldn't have came, if she wouldn't have helped me, I probably, I probably, I would have died. She would be your angel. Yeah. What has that experience like taught you about life? Or not even taught you, just what has it made you like realize yeah, about life that real, you want to change? Is real. Yeah. First thing, first, first What's the first guy? Why he real? He's so real. Mm-hmm. Um, second, I mean, it just ta- it kind of showed me like. As far as my current relationships with people, like who are real friends were, like who really cares, but well, not really like it don't count people out, but it kind of shows you like who really is like mm-hmm. there for you in your corner, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, when you when you do kind of like fall through the pits, you know, um, when you're at your lowest and like the people who are around, people who are uplifting you. Like I mean, I was in a position where 
Like I, I was losing everything at one time. Like I had lost, I had literally lost everything at the beginning of this year. I lost everything. Mm-hmm. No one ever knew that. I lost That's crazy. Everything. Um, but shit, got that shit back. <laughs> got that shit back. That's good. Well, you know, but yeah, it's been it's been a rough journey. It's been a really rough journey. But now things are better, and mm-hmm. I'm building the team now. Mm-hmm. Um. A lot of doors are opening up too. Mm-hmm. Doors are opening up, and I'm also allowing myself to like um, explore, like of course the music scene, because mm-hmm. I hadn't done that since I graduated law school. I hadn't done it for a while, um, but I'm doing it now. And I have this amazing group of young artists. And this is one kid who um, sticks out. He's 17. I want, you, I want you to tell him about it. Can you hit? Or do you have to wait? I can tell you. I can tell you about okay. It. His name, um, Sneak peek, here you go. So, yeah, so one his name is Sharp Runner E. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Eliza, called Sharp Runner E. Met them, the way I met them, I'm Muslim. Thank God, you've been doing the same, huh? I was just going to say, <laughs> that's how you know, like, stuff just yeah. meant to happen when it naturally comes about. Yeah, so I was behind my warehouse um, taking a smoke break and this girl and her friend like walk around and they were taking a smoke break. But they were coming from, I didn't know where they were coming from because my warehouse the way it's built, like there's nothing back there but like um this up oh, this restoration place. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well yeah, I'm gonna be smoking. And then I heard she started singing and she was um listening to an old track of herself to kinda calm her nerves because she sounded good on the track. So she would listen to it to calm her nerves. And that's that's what I know she was doing. But then I heard this guy on the song she listened to. And I was just like, Hey, how y'all doing? Like who was that guy? Mm-hmm. Like, who are those ones? And she was like, me. I was like, for real? Who are those? And she was telling me who it was. And I was like, I was like, oh, see, like, you know, I was just kind of asking a few questions and and then she asked me who I was. And then I was like, yeah, so that guy, I was like, can you interest me, Jay? Mm-hmm. I was like, who? Like, she told me what, tell me how I was like, what the fuck, wait? Yeah. I was like, from where? And so he's in Streetport, Louisiana. We moved to Memphis senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, And now he goes to Memphis Valley. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so like I just bring him back every weekend in the studio. That's lit. Every weekend, so I met them. Um, two music videos. It's really cool. It's really exciting. That's lit. It's because it's like I get to see, I get to see like someone who he need he needed that mm-hmm. chance, like that chance. You know, like somebody to give him a chance, somebody mm-hmm. to like believe in him and his craft. Because mm-hmm. he's very, he's so talented. He's so talented. I've never met, I've never met another like I don't think I've met another artist like in my life, like mm-hmm. not in my life. I'm not. I've never worked with another artist to this key. Really? I've never seen nothing like it. That's how you know it's meant to happen for you when you took it. Like it. Especially where you have that much confidence behind him. It's like not dead ass. That's lit. I can't wait for you to hear I was going to say, now I'm excited. Yeah. Hey! We were premiering like a song or something. We, we just shot a v- music video. We just finished. Really? Yeah, Sleepy. We just finished a music video. Well, so we're going to um, play the song. We're going to have him play the song. Yeah. But, oh. <laughs> We have to do now. We can do it at the warehouse. But speaking of the warehouse, we're actually gonna go into the all access part of Chess and see his behind the scenes of being a brand owner and just like don't let mom find out behind the scenes and everything like that. So, all right, y'all, gonna catch y'all in this next next scene. One, two, three. All right, y'all. So we're at the warehouse, the headquarters of Don't Let Mom Find Out. So today we're gonna see like some behind the scenes on like inventory, what it's like owning the business, all of that. So it's kind of like MTV warehouse type deal. So something like that, yeah, Welcome yeah. To <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my warehouse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not the top secret password, guys. Top secret password. Uh huh. <laughs> How you go about designing different stuff? Uh, <laughs> It's normally like late night. Mm-hmm. It's always late night. It's always like a uh, like an all nighter. My design process. Uh, <laughs> it all Dan- goes down here. Handy Danny notebook, Handy iPad. Notebook. No, like uh, yeah, my bad. That's lit. But no, like I'm or anything. I do everything on Adobe Fresco. Mm-hmm. Late nights, um, deliriousness. That's where most of my designs come from. Mm-hmm. Sitting on the couch. Um, music. I'm kind of trying to print the picture. Mm-hmm. Me sitting in the middle of the couch. <laughs> late nights. I'm talking about like 4 o'clock in the morning. Early you're mornings, part, really. And you listen to music playing, and it's me and my dog in the room. That's, and that's it. And I bet the best ideas come from that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of the time, like, 
Most of the time, it's from a, after a day of like bullshit, mm -hmm. like dealing with a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. um, sadness. Hardly has it ever been where I've been in that, like just super happy and like just asking something hard. Mm -hmm. It's never really happened. Expressing your emotions through your design. Yeah, yeah, it's always been something like always been like an obstacle or some kind of like heartbreak or something with like sadness, like some kind of sadness. Mm. That's interesting. Um, yeah. That's cool though. Never I pity myself, I make the best. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be sad, you might as well make money from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be sad. I might as well make money from being sad, right? That's what. So how you stay organized? We see you at the warehouse. Uh, as you can see, this place is a dump. But it still has some organization to it. It got a little bit. But I have a great team who like trying to help me keep, cause I'm, I, I have a lot of organized chaos all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my team, they try to keep it together. That's cool. But right now we just got done doing some pop-ups. So we like, inventory is looking light mm -hmm. in real life. That's good though. Um, yeah. But some new stuff that's coming in. So all this stuff here, it's all like new stuff that's, uh, well not, uh, like all the stuff that we, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there, we go. there we go. So like, not this stuff, but like all this stuff is new. Um, it's gonna be coming out soon. This month. Mm. Uh, not gonna release this. Maybe come out in a t-shirt, maybe. But like all like heavy work, heavy weight, like t-shirts, crop cut, drop shoulder. What, what date you thinking? June first. Also, when y'all see this episode, y'all might as well make mark your calendar. Yeah. Okay. June first, and I'm also doing a pop up in Atlanta. That's what. Um, so I'm really gonna be dropping all the stuff in Atlanta. That's what. Pretty cool. What the? Doing the brand trip. Mm -hmm. The A and the pop up. Um, and also I think that the viewers will be happy to know that I'm bringing Sad Boys back. <laughs> Y'all, I'm gonna show y'all the throwback pictures of the sad girls. <laughs> but they um they have like a, a different design. I mm -hmm. did the sad boys, but I put straps and rivets. I like the side. strap edition. Um, you can like unbutton the straps or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But this is a sample, really rough hair sample. First sample. This is the first sample of the new version two. Mm. Um, sad boy denim. How many versions of samples do you usually go through before having your final product? It really depends. It depends on what the product is, but sometimes I'll do something and I'll make a mistake and it won't be how I imagined it, but then I'll like it with the mistake. Yeah. Like right now. I so trial and error, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so like, uh, especially with the fit. Most of the time it's a fit. It's not really the design. It's a fit or like, like with this jean, this jean not on the body. It doesn't look that flattering to me. But when I put them on with the pair of boots or something, the way I wear them looks really good, actually. Mm. So initially when I saw the jean and I, Opened it out the package, I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna have to alter this. But then I put them on, I was like, Actually, you don't it's have to. Fucking flyer. Yeah. Fire, so I like it. But then we have something like this, another error I made in designing. Um, it says, Don't woof love. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice that. I got, exactly, I got the photo hoodie. So I've, been trying, I've been trying to tell my team, like, I'm gonna drop it anyway. Mm -hmm. Like this, just like this with the air on there. Call That's it. creative. And they're like, nah, bro, they're gonna get you. I'm like, bro, it's, it's <laughs> funny, right? It's fun. No, that's what, I don't know, I like it. I'm gonna drop it like this. It's all about having fun with it, though. Yeah. Like, it's not, it don't have to be so serious. It don't have to be perfect. And it makes a story behind yeah, the product. Like, like, How yeah, did you bro, come up with this? I saw it, and it was messed up. My system was like, caught it when I had time to change it, but I was like, nah, let's keep Go it. ahead and like, go with it. Let's see. People are gonna know this. That's what they do, they're gonna be like, what's this? And I'm gonna be like, you know what that means. Mm -hmm. Wolf love. Bitch, I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I'm a dog. Wolf. <laughs> go through like this line and tell us like, what's your favorite, what's your favorite thing you've ever designed? And then what's your favorite thing between this selection that you've designed? Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Favorite thing I've designed. Ugh. <laughs> Do I even have, I don't even think I have a copy for myself of the piece that's my favorite piece, honestly. Mm. And I've only seen one, and I think... Hmm. All right. Okay, here's one. Okay. The color... This is a, a piece that never released. Um, crocheted the front pockets on it. Mm -hmm. There's a crochet front pocket. The zippers, of course, have the sad boy. 
face outline. That's what for the zippers. The back of it though, this is a, this is a kicker. Like feel wood. It's like carpet. Yeah. That's lit. Hold on, this is carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it is lit. I like that. That's different. Um, and the fit is it fits really nice. Mm -hmm. Only thing I reason I didn't drop this. Because I didn't like this mustard yellow color. Really? And I couldn't figure out another color to layer this crochet with this pattern on top of. So I was Blue. like, you know what? This archive it. It's not okay. going to come out. Dope concept. Yeah. Really dope. Maybe on something else. I'll do it again. Maybe it's another kind of way. But Carpet is hard. Maybe I'll give this idea to someone else. Maybe I'll like allow our design some someone else and let them have this idea. Yeah. We do like a contest. Yeah. Whoever can redo the best. Redo it. Mm hmm. That'd be, that'd be hard. That's, that's a good idea, actually. That's a really good idea. Stay tuned. We're going to do a contest on Ch Chad's yeah. design. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever can redo this design the best. Yeah, a rework contest. A rework workshop. That's lit. Mm. Don't let mom find out a rework workshop. There you go. Look there. Look okay, period. What else do people know about you that, like, well, what do people not know about you that you feel like they should know? Uh. No. Yeah, I feel like they should know. Or like, what's something that's misunderstood about you? Um, that's a good question. Because <laughs> like, because I really don't know. I'm not even tuned in. I need to be. I'm not even tuned in enough to know what people say about me. Like, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I'm so like occupied. I have no idea. Um, but. I don't know. That's a really hard question. I have no freaking idea. That's cool. Think on that though. That's something to think about. We're gonna circle back. We're gonna circle back on that. What advice do you have for business owner or brand owners that's trying to like scale their business or just like get into it, basically? Yeah. Um, in order to scale your business, you have to be able to take risks first of all. But the second thing is you. In order to scale, that means you want to increase profits mm -hmm. while decreasing the cost. Mm -hmm. of the so, make more. What you want to make more of the product. Mm -hmm. um, of course, sell more. And the only way you can sell more is to spend more on marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing is very important. Yeah. So what I'm gonna say is. And and they, and this is like a, something that like business owners have an issue with because they something like that they be like you know you spend less and make more it's mm -hmm. hard to do because in today's world because you know yeah that'd be taxing <laughs> you just have to spend on the right thing mm -hmm. um but marketing is like number one not true Definitely. marketing number one spend your money on marketing and spend less on the product more on more on marketing less on product. Yeah. We still have a good quality of mm -hmm. product, but less on the product than on the market. Got you. Yeah. Or less on the production. Mm -hmm. Whether that be anything. <laughs> I was gonna say anything. Take it back. Focus on the content mm -hmm. and the market. Got you. you know what I'm saying? That's what so what's next besides like the pop up shop? What do you have like what what's your rest of the goals for this year for Don't Let Mom Find Out? Um, so don't let mom find out. I, I want to put together a uh, show of fashion. I was going to say you should do a fashion, fashion show. show. A fresh fashion show, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I want it to be somewhere, somewhere cool. I was going to say, where would you have it? I got this one. Somewhere cool. Um, so we're figuring it out. That's cool. But in the meantime, it's many pop ups mm -hmm. in different cities. And spreading the name, spreading yeah, the brand. Yeah. And um, of course, growing the the label and the management company. Mm -hmm. That's good. So let's talk about the What is your man Art. management company called? Like don't manage me. Don't manage. That's lit. <laughs> High five. We like that. Wait. Yeah. Don't manage me. And then label is called Heaven's Row. Heaven's Row. I like that. Yeah. That's lit. I heard it here first. I heard it here first. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's all, y'all. Thank you for watching this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, and we're going to continue our segment, All Access, All of May. Yeah. Period. Okay, yeah.